Hey guys, it's John with Rubly Custom Rods, and today I'm going to show you um, how easy it is to go ahead and apply snakeskin um, to your custom rod build like you see here. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a poll in my community tab um, and asked what people's experience was um, with, you know, applying snakeskin to their custom rod builds. And I was quite surprised that a lot of people have never really done it before. Um, so I thought I would do is take this time and show you how to apply a snake skin like this one here. So let's let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do um, is we are going to go ahead and um, apply this snake skin here, um, even though, you know, it's just like leather, as you can see. Um, you know, I got it from my distributor. It had a tear in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and work with that. Um, but I'm going to show you guys uh, how to apply this. So the first thing we want to do um, is you want to have your blank and, and I'm using a dowel for uh, just instructional purposes. And what we want to do um, is we want to measure to make sure that we get a good fit um, with the skin on the blank. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and mark where we're going to apply the skin to the rod and so I'm going to lay a piece down here and just to give me an idea of how much space I can I can work with. I'm going to go in here a little bit. Okay, so that's just going to give me an idea um, of where I'm applying my skin. It really doesn't matter um, because this dowel has the same diameter all the way down. Um, but when you're working on a rod blank, you always have to take into consideration the taper of the rod. And so when you do something like here, um, where you're using the tape to get the diameter and then you place it on the skin, as you will see here in a minute, um, you want to make sure you remember where you're, where you're trying to apply that on the rod blank. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut slight pressure through the tape. Um, remember when you're doing this with the razor blade on your blank, you do not want to apply a lot of pressure. You apply too much pressure, you get down and you end up scoring um, the actual blank and you can compromise the integrity um, of that blank. So I just go ahead and take my piece of tape off like this. And then I'm going to Pull this other one off where I cut it at. Alrighty. So then what I'll do, set that dowel aside. Um, and then now I'm going to come back to my uh, snake skin. Again, here is my snake skin side. So then I just want to flip it over. Um, you can take your finger and run it across and feel which way would be towards the head of the snake and which way would be towards the back of the snake. Um, sometimes you can look at it and just tell it. Really kind of want to find the center of this skin. And I think that's about there. So I just want to, I just want to crease it a little bit. Give me an idea. So when I'm placing this tape down, I know where this, center is so I got the front one and I've got the back one the next thing I want to do once I have my tape on there is I want to come back with my pen and I want to measure or excuse me draw a line where i'm going to be making some cuts on those and 
And also um, something that I like to do, because I remember this is the front, I could mark that, you know, F for front, R for rear, and that'll help, you know, remind me once I make this cut and I apply it to the to the blank, I know which way it's supposed to post uh, face, excuse me. So once I have uh, those lines marked up, I'm gonna come back here and I'm just gonna cut. right along that line. I'll do the same thing here. All right, and I'll set those little scrap pieces aside. If you have bigger scrap pieces, you can use them for something else if you want to tie those into some type of decorative wrap or under wrap. Um, so now that I have that on there, I'm going to go ahead and peel the tape off. One piece, take the second piece off. And then what else I could do again is I can just come back, you know, a slight F on the back of that leather part of the snake. And then I can do the same thing if I wanted down here with the R. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some of my Flex Coat Color Preserver. Any type of color preserver will work. Um, I, I like to use Flex Coat. I just shake it up before I go to apply it. And then all I wanna do, take my brush, and this is where um, you know some of these small disposable brushes come in handy. Um, and, and while I have this, let me, let me just give you another pro tip real quick. Notice these bristles are kind of sticking out all over the place on these disposable brushes. If you want, you just come in with your scissors, come in there, find those bristles, and cut some of those stray ones back. And that'll help, uh, you know, clean it up a little bit so you kind of don't have some of those stray hairs um, or stray bristles kind of sticking all over the place when you're trying to apply things like finish or something, and then you... You know, they accidentally touch part of the blank you don't want it to touch at. So that's just kind of a quick pro tip that you can do as well. So the next thing I want to do, again, I have my Flex Coat um, Color Preserver. And then what I want to do is I want to take the Color Preserver and apply it to the back of this snakeskin pretty liberally. And what it'll do um, is it will start to curl up and, and that's okay. That is totally, totally fine. But I want to put this on liberally. I, I'm not, you know, you don't have to worry about kind of skimping on it, you know, going real light. Just, just apply it on there. It'll start to absorb it up into the back of the that leather. All right, almost done. And I just use the scissors to kind of hold it down back there in the back a little bit for me. Allow me to move this stuff around a little bit. There we go. And then what I would like to do is just set that aside. And come in and clean up my mess right there really quick. All right, then I wanna come back with my dowel or my rod blank that I'm using. And I wanna find those marks that I made, right? And then what I would want to do, again, with my color preserver, I just wanna come on to that blank and apply the color preserver to the blank where I'm going to have um, 
that skin sit on, and that's between those two red marks. Hey, leave a comment down below. Uh, you know, if you've if you've ever used or not used uh, snake skin before in your rod bills, let me know down in the in the uh, comments block, and let me know if you you know if you did use it before or if you have used it before. Excuse me. Um, how it came out, um, or if you haven't used it, if this video is changing your mind about possibly using it. All right, so now I have the color preserver on my blank and I have it on my skin. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my skin. Again, I have it oriented with the F and the R and I'm gonna take that and lay that on there. And then I'm going to find where my center mark is at. And I want to say my center mark is right there. And I'm going to apply some pressure. And I'm going to work in one direction. And I'll come back to the other side. Now, remember, I have that hole right there, and that's okay. And I cut mine a little short. This is a great moment for a learning. I can actually pull it and close it. So when you think you're short, you come back again. Remember, this is like leather. And so you can pull it. It's got a little give to it, a little stretch. And so when you think you're short, you just give it a tug. All right. There we go. So now I have my snake skin on there. And now, make sure I keep those ends tight. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna come back with some tape and not the I want the sticky side up, right? So I'm gonna make it stick to itself. And I'm just gonna apply some pressure and hold it. What I'm trying to do is use this tape to apply pressure until that flex coat color preserver or any color preserver you decide to use dries properly. And then after 24 hours, we'll go ahead and peel that tape back off and get into the next step. Okay guys, so we're back and it's been um, 24 hours uh, since we put this tape over the top of the snake skin with the flex coat uh, color preserver. And so now what I wanna do is just peel this tape off. There we go. Again, remember, um, I've got the tape inside out, so the sticky side of the tape was not touching um, any of the snake skin. But now that's on there nice. You can see, again, that was that uh, tear that I got actually from my distributor, um, not something that I did. And the next thing I like to do um, is choosing out a, a, a color thread that will go um, good or complement the snake skin. Um, and I like to use uh, this copper thread. And so I'm going to use a little bit of it today while I get set up here. And uh, I think I think copper, um, you know, metallic orange, there's a few different 
variations um, of this color. I think they help accentuate um, the snake skin, you know, the, the colors and the pattern that you have within the snake skin itself. Um, and that's why I kind of like using um, the copper color. But what I'm going to do, I'm just getting my wrapper tension set up here real quick. I think that's it. And then what I like to do is I like to just kind of come in and I'm just wanting to do enough or wrap enough to get um, to get the end of the skin started. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape real quick. You just give me an edge. Um, you know, you see that red mark right there on both sides of that snake skin. You know, that's what I, how I marked where I wanted my snake skin to go. So now I'm just going to use a piece of masking tape to kind of give me an edge or a border to wrap against. That way when I'm packing the thread, you know, it's got a place to go. I want to find the bottom crossover. And so now I'm just wrapping over my snake skin a little bit. You can use any kind of thread you want. I just encourage you, you know, metallic, color fast, um, you know, NCP, non-NCP type thread. Um, let me tighten that down a little bit. Again, you just want something that's going to, you know, make your wrap look really good you know you can wrap with your thread right up to the edge of the skin but if you have an irregularity like here where I've my cut you know that bottom was a little crooked there left a little gap so what I can do is just easily continue to wrap right on top of that skin And I'm just going nice and nice and slow. And I think that's it right there. Now what I want to do, I'm going to come under here so I can secure that tag. I'll do three, four, five, pack the thread. And then what I'll do is cut. All right. Sounds good. That end is done. Take my tape off. I'll come over here and make another straight edge with this tape. Again, I, I like using masking tape, um, you know, just to give me something straight once I apply it to the blank, um, or in this case, the dowel, uh, this wooden dowel. But I like to use masking tape to give me um, an edge to pack the line through or pack the line to, to give me a nice, straight, clean look. Um, you know, if, if it's going to be the, you know, the end of a wrap uh, pattern, if you will. So get down there, pull it. All right. So then what I want to do is come in here, cut the thread. Now, again, you can see I have a little gap, um, you know, so I, I may want to wrap all the way over that to cover that gap. And again, in theory, I would be doing a long stretch or, you know, a short stretch like this. Um, and, and this is OK.
And then if I had to make this right side a little longer, I could just balance it out on the left um, by adding more thread, right? So I have the tension a little tight right now on the wrapper just because I don't want too much. I'm just trying to control what I'm doing here. Just wrapping and gonna take that over and cover that bottom piece a little bit. Give it a couple more. I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and use my white piece of thread here to tuck the tag here. And remember, when you're wrapping, you know, that you're basically working, um, you know, in, with this snake skin, it's like working with a piece of leather. So you don't want to push too hard if you're, you know, you have your burnishing tool laid against it. You, you know, you don't want to do anything to it because you don't want to scar it or cut it. But it's okay to work on it a little bit, um, you know, with your burnishing tool. All right, and then that, um, that is really it. So that is, oh, my thread's getting away from me here on this one a little bit. So on this left side, I'll come in and trim that up, but that's basically it, right? So I have my snake skin. I've done my decorative wraps on each end to cover that. Um, and then the next thing you would want to do is you would want to apply your um, finish to that um, one or two coats or however many you are doing uh, for your uh, rod that you're doing and then what you're left with um, is this right here right so this is what you're left with I'll move that and then you know once you've applied your finish uh, one or two coats uh, you've gone over the top it's nice and smooth that's what it'll look like and it, I, I think snake skin has a great look to it of course um, you know, these uh, two snake skins are two different types that I have on here. Um, you know, it depends on what type you want. Uh, you know, this is I think I'm working. This one here is Cobra and then this one is a sea snake. Um, but the uh, you know, there's rattlesnake. Um, there's some other stuff out there that you can use um, for snake skin um, on your custom rod bills. Again, another great way to individualize or customize, um, you know, your fishing rod for yourself, or if you're building one for a friend or a family member, um, or, you know, if, if you're, you got your side hustle thing going on and you're building rods for people, again, a great way, um, to make a custom rod. Uh, and, and I like, uh, you know, using snake skin, um, in lieu of a size, a thread under wrap, um, on some of my builds where I have both a, uh, you know, where, I, where I'm going to need to under wrap under the guides um, because I'm doing a heavier rod type build. So I hope this helps. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, if you did, please hit the like button. Uh, and if you're new to this channel, a, you know, thanks for watching and welcome to Real Blue Custom Rods. Um, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, take care. Make sure you watch this next video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.